Hey everyone and welcome to The Crimson Stitchery. This video is a much requested um, vlog and it's going to be a houseplant tour. People have been asking me to record this for absolutely ages, maybe even ever since I started The Crimson Stitchery because I'm normally sitting on my couch here. At the moment I'm on a footstool um, and I sit next to this bench that I've got next to these kind of glass patio sliding doors um, that I have covered in different houseplants that have come and gone over the last two years since I have been recording and uploading onto YouTube. So we thought that today I'd take the opportunity to do a little whiz around and show you what I've got. I'll just start by sharing my kind of attitude towards houseplants and gardening in general because I consider myself an enthusiastic amateur maybe not a beginner but definitely not an intermediate and I've had a lot of compliments on my garden from friends and even family um, saying that it's really lovely and you know people that really enjoy seeing the houseplants and so on but in my opinion there's kind of there's not really much to my method except that I choose plants that are ideally easy to care for and I also make sure that they are living in the best light conditions and water conditions that I can supply for them. So it's really just about meeting the plant's needs and also being realistic about you yourself and how you're going to be taking care of your plants. Are you going to be showering them twice a week? No, not me, um, <laughs> which cuts out loads. But I think as you're going to see um, shortly, I actually have a lot of the same type of plants because I really enjoy taking cuttings. I'm also really cheap when it comes to plants. I think especially since they've got so popular, like they, some of them have become really expensive. So when I can, I take cuttings. Um, I just ask for cuttings from friends and family. I get given them. I make them. I give them away. Like I am quite generous with my cuttings as well. Um, and again, I do cuttings for things that are easy to root and uh, is it cloning, like easy to pro let them procreate, basically. Um, and I am also, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm admitting something <laughs> very naughty to you guys now. I am also a little bit of a cutting thief. So if I'm in like a park. I might, you know, snap off a branch of rosemary off a very big and thriving, healthy rosemary bush. You know, that kind of business, um, <laughs> which is super naughty and probably not allowed. But hey ho, I know for a fact that I am not the only person that does <laughs> this. Sometimes I think when you get into the habit of taking cuttings, you just can't help yourself. So without further ado, um, I'm just going to switch this uh, camera back off selfie mode. And I'm just going to show you my spaces now. So this is the corner of the couch and this is where I normally sit to do my video recording. I'm trying not to show you the mess that's in the garden at the moment. And here is basically my plant bench. And some things stay the same and are pretty constant but other things do move around and change with the seasons, with the health of the plant. So I'm going to start at the end here with this plant stand that I ordered. You know when you just do something on impulse and then kind of regret it. So I ordered that plant stand. It didn't, when it came, it wasn't as nice as it looked on the website. And here I've got some really gorgeous purple Tradescantia, um, which is in the so-called Wandering Dew family. I've got to say that I feel like botany really hasn't caught up with like cultural criticism and commentary when it comes to migration, land, travel, diaspora and people <laughs> overall. Um, but anyway, this is yeah, this is like a messy corner by the it's the back door. So, you know, we've got like our garden shoes and gardening gloves and stuff. So, yeah, this is a really gorgeous purple Tradescantia. It likes the light. So some of the old growth is a bit spindly, but the new growth that it sent out is is really, really strong and looking really glossy. So I, ab I absolutely love this. And it's, again, super easy to take cuttings from. It's the kind of plant that I've actually got a few different Tradescantia hanging around. Um, I love them. There's so many different varieties. They're so easy. You can make them be kind of perky and upright or you can let them trail, which is what I enjoy doing. And um, when I've been on holiday to... Um, hot countries I've seen this grown outdoors as a bedding plant and it looks absolutely amazing and it has like these really sweet little baby pink flowers that pop out and then up on the top shelf well firstly I've got this gorgeous cactus which is like lime green with yellow spikes and as you can see it's a family 
veritable family. We've had this guy for years, grown off. I think this, I'm not going to touch it, this one at the end, like a hand coming out like that. That was the original family group. And then it just kind of grew and grew and grew. It's it slowed down a lot now. It's a bit bent. You can see it's a bit curvy, kind of trying to look for the light as everything is because the light is coming from that direction and coming in. So I love it. And, I, and I've just put it in a terracotta pot, which I painted black with chalk paint. And then here is like a mysterious succulent sedum thing. Again, I grew this from like one stem and... Every now and then it, it gets really happy and it puts on loads of growth. It likes the heat and like it gets really nice and fat, which is good because you don't want it to be all like sad and spindly and thin like this. And I just let this hang down like that to be careful not to bump into it. But again, it's super easy to root. So sometimes they, the hanging bits break off and I just break them back and stick them back in the soil. So I've got quite a cavalier attitude when it comes to this kind of thing. Hanging off the end of this plant bench here is a begonia and this is when I was <laughs> naughty so like all three of these ones in the gold plant stand were grown from cuttings that my grandma gave me here we've got a little weird vintage 1970s Christmas gnome hanging out it's a decoration where the thread came off um, anyway I'm not normally the kind of person that has <laughs> little people hanging around <laughs> but this was for vlogmas anyway um, yeah so the begonia what was I saying? Yeah, so these are all cuttings from my grandma. And this, I was super naughty because I was in somewhere like a waiting room. <laughs> and somewhere, I, I can't remember where it was, or like a, like a cafe or something, but like a big, like more like a canteen. It was somewhere at university, basically, like either a canteen or kind of waiting room. And I was super naughty and I broke off a tiny bit of the begonia managed to root it it took a lot of weeks and it's just a year later I think it is it's just looking so good it does le lose leaves you can see at the bottom this one's about to come off um and this one's not doing great kind of crisped up and I cut off the crispy bits and you can see on the stem there's a bit of scarring where lots of leaves just fell off but there's also like there's some new growth there there's a new shoot here I used to really hate begonias when I was growing up. I found them ugly, but this one, <laughs> this illicit begonia, um, is gorgeous. I really like it. It's quite small and it's very, very dotty. And I've just got to emphasize that when I take cuttings, like I only do it off like really big, thriving, healthy plants, ones that are, you know, like outgrowing their containers. And I only break off like a tiny bit. It will never hurt or damage the plant. I know I'm naughty. Um, and then here, another cutting from a similar situation um this one has been really slow to grow it's been going for at least a year and a half and bits have died off and it's still it suddenly had a growth spurt in the summer I think I might have fertilized it slightly um I I don't know what this is called I think it's peperomia it's one that was quite popular in the sort of houseplant vlogging scene a little while back and I really like the textured leaves but it's just such a slow grower and here's an aloe vera. When I was um, at uni the first time, like in 2010 or something, my mum gave me an aloe vera plant. And they've since gone on to have so many babies that I've split and split and split and split. And you can see where I've cut bits off in order to treat burns and wounds because I'm quite clumsy in the kitchen. And it's even having a little pup here. So this one, um, this bowl actually last year was overgrown with way too many aloe vera and I dug them all out. It was a really big ordeal to do that. Um, and it was like really hard to physically split them apart. But I've done that now, kind of dotted them around the place. And then this one's having more babies. So it's great. Um, here we've got the amaryllis bulb that I just planted. We'll see what happens with that. It's looking a bit anemic at the moment. This is just some incense to clear the air. And then here, this is what I bought <laughs> just from the supermarket. It's like a blue leaf fern or something. I can't remember. And I really like the, it's very sage greeny and it's very matte with an almost white kind of chalky looking texture. And this guy is super weird. Like it just goes through phases where it looks like it's half dead and all the leaves have dropped off and dried off. Like all the leaves will be looking like this. And then every now and then it will just perk up again. Um, I think I tried fertilising it. I moved it to somewhere with more light because it was in a shadier part of the room before and it really wasn't happy. I think most plants, most plants, but not all like direct light. And it's in a little pink pot. And then this one is an aglaonema. 
that um, was a cutting from a relative um, who's got a beautiful collection of aglonema, which are really hard to get in this country. So I was super glad when she gave me this cutting. And it's gorgeous. It's got this pink, <gasps> look at that color. Um, yeah, the light's shining through it, so it's not as glowing as that in real life. It's a bit more muted, but it's still pink. And I don't really know about this one because again, it was a cutting, it was doing really slow, it suddenly put on loads of growth, and then now it's weirdly like shriveling up all the time, but um, the soil is pretty damp and it's surrounded by other plants. So that's another thing, I like to group the plants because I've had a lot of success with that whole, is it transpiration? When they're sharing the water um, in the atmosphere all together. I find that that's really successful. So here we've got a cutting of a lemon leaf geranium. Um, when I started the Crimson Stitch, we had an enormous lemon leaf geranium right here and it basically got too leggy. So I put it outside, took tons of cuttings and that one was a gift from my grandmother in Aberdeen. So I brought it all the way down from Aberdeen on the train and then, yeah, had it here, took loads of cuttings, gave so many away. And what's really gorgeous is, is the scent because in the evening, if I'm sitting on the couch, I just get like the scent just wafts across, especially if I'm knocking it and stuff. So that is really gorgeous. Um, I've never managed to get it to flower indoors. I've had the one I put outdoors flower. The flowers aren't spectacular. I'd really love to get the other kind of scented geraniums in this um, series, species. <laughs> like this is lemon leaf scented. You can get rose leaf scented and other ones. This one I've had so many comments on. Um, it looks very unusual and it was given as a cutting by a friend of my grandma's who just had a sort of cutting session and then gave loads away and then I got one. And it's Iracina herbsty, blood leaf plant or chicken gizzard plant. I think it's native to Southeast Asia, potentially South America, sort of with all the colonial exploration routes, it all comes into one. But what's weird is that it really flourished at first, but I think it's just not happy here with the lack of light because suddenly it just started going super leggy. So I started taking cuttings of it and luckily it's really easy to root. Um, it's super gorgeous, love it. I'm trying to keep keep my cuttings alive so that I can keep propagating it. But um, what's interesting is that when I went to... Um, I think it was Cambodia, I saw this plant growing like at the base of trees, you know, in, in the way that in the UK you might get crocus or little bulbs and stuff like that growing at the base of trees. But in, in Cambodia, this was growing at the base of trees and it was about three foot tall and it, they had different colours and they had the pink one, they had loads of purple ones and it was really lush. The leaves were a bit bigger, but not tons. So yeah, I think the fact that it grows at the base of trees suggests it doesn't get a lot of light. Um, but um yeah, it um, still needs a bit more than it's currently getting. And then the last one that I've got lined up on the bench is this umbrella plant, which we got for something like £1.79 because it was reduced in half dead, or so they thought, um, the garden centre people. And it's doing really well. I've had it for a couple of years now and it's put on this new growth and it's variegated. I've been to people's houses and they've got ones like this that are like four foot tall and enormous and I'm super jealous. I wish mine was four foot tall, but it's thinking about becoming two foot. So it's thinking about it. Um, so that's that. And then if we peek over the top of the plant bench, we have got the nursery where things go and they need to be recuperated. So this is another Tradescantia that I originally had cascading down a shelf, but because it was on the top shelf, it got really hot from the hot air and it kind of dried out. So I clipped all of the tops off and just stuck them back in the soil and they're now thriving and they're happy being closer to the light. Although I can see now that something has been nibbling this. And this is some basil that's now smelling amazing now that I'm brushing it, that was grown from a cutting. Um, it's not going to last much longer. Another spider plant baby, my Iracina, another Tradescantia, and then uh, a ugly looking jar of um, cuttings of geraniums. I don't think they're going to root, in fact I can see mould, so I'm probably just going to have to cut my losses with those. I think I did it too late in the season. Um, another gorgeous, gorgeous Tradescantia with purple underneath. That again wasn't doing very well so I just snipped the tops off and trying to reroot them. That one's being much more fussy and finickety and more difficult to keep alive. And then I've got these gorgeous twisted cactus that my grandma bought me. Um, they were a set of three so she dug one out for herself and they were really expensive from a very posh 
trendy hipster plant shop, super expensive, um, but she treated me. And sadly, they're not doing that well. I think that they haven't had enough light and heat, so I've put them closer to the window. Um, and when they grow, they get really tall and they go curly, curly, welly, welly at the top. But these ones are a bit stretched. Whereas my grandma's one that's in the south facing window um, is getting way more light. So yeah, the nursery. And then you can see back there two giant aloe vera that were dug out of this pot originally. So that's my overview of those house plants. And then if we go across to this side of the room, above my keyboard I've got some more and that gap on the right there is where those Tradescantia were cascading down and so if we start up top we've got a peace lily we've always had peace lilies and um, we used to have loads some of them died off some of them got repotted into just this one pot so that's currently doing quite well I've got a horrible damp mark because of the nightmare of the roof that I'm not going to go into here we've got snake plant, Sansevera. This one's doing really, really well, even though it gets hardly any light. Um, but it seems to like that. It's thriving, so whatever it likes, sitting next to a shakiri. Then we've got this lovely <laughs> perky fern that just suddenly put on some new growth this spring. Um, I think it liked the fertiliser. And yeah, I love the colour, but the fronds do sometimes drop down onto the um, keyboard here, which is a bit irritating so I normally keep the lid shut Then we've got a big looking spider plant that I potted up when I moved in and it's looking pretty perky and I like the bright green colour as well of the leaves so yeah that one's looking pretty happy and the last spot that I've got to show you is this little random shelf on the other side of the sofa currently in front of um it's got some rec boxes full of records in front of it. And here we've got a second type of spider plant. And this one's got the opposite markings of the other one, because the other one had green on the inside, but this one's got, sorry, the other one. Anyway, the stripes are the opposite way around with the green and the white. And it's looking super perky. It's got a flower. Um, and then it's had a baby that I chopped off and potted up. So that will be given to someone, maybe for Christmas. Then I've got this snake plant, Sansevera, which is a bit of a sad story. So let me tell you about that. Turn around, I've got the snake plant in the background. So basically my friend gave me this snake plant when I moved into the house, it's a housewarming gift. And so it's about two and a half years I've had it. And just this summer it started doing really badly. It used to be, you know, at one point it did really, really well. We repotted it, it doubled in size, um, as in it like put up loads of new growth. It didn't get that tall ever, this one. And um, then basically I did some research into Sansevera and um, I discovered it's native to Nigeria. So in the summer, sometimes I put some of the houseplants outside to get a bit more light and warmth, especially on days where it's humid. And that works really well for cacti and it works really well for pretty much anything succulent. Like they love it, they just drink up the heat. And this one was from Nigeria. So my partner and I felt a little bit... Um, protective over this transplant from Nigeria now living in England and um, especially my partner who's half Nigerian <laughs> got very paternal about this plant and thought oh it wants the sun of Nigeria <laughs> it wants the heat of the Nigerian <laughs> landscape <laughs> and the African sun let's give it the sun so we took it outside and we put it in the full sun and I was not happy and it's basically never quite recovered since. So <laughs> I guess the lesson learned is that some Nigerians like to be in the shade, um, including this guy here. So I don't know why I'm gendering all of my plants male, but anyway, there you go. So it's just never quite recovered. We tried to water it, didn't like that. Just the other day, I noticed that loads of the leaves were yellow and sort of half rotten away, so I took them out and now it's really, really thinned out. So lesson learned, don't anthropomorphize your plants, just look at the conditions that they enjoy. And then lastly, I've just got a vase full of pussy willow. It's just branches. Um, it's a couple of years old, but it still looks quite good. It's not too dusty and I will be hanging Christmas decorations off it and Chinese New Year decorations in due course as well so that concludes my plant tour i'm gonna leave it there i hope that you have enjoyed watching um let me know what you think of this video and yeah let me know what your favorite house plants to grow and collect are in the comments below